as it was before. So well, eventually, down the road, yes. Well, I mean, down the road, over five years from now. Right, there might be another truck come up, or another tanker, or the next engine is a Cadillac is a 91, so that's not due for 20 more years, or 20 years from 91, so that's what, 2020 something? No, it can't, it'll be 2011. Thank you for the next one, too. But, uh, they know the trucks. Keep rolling right? up. Okay. Okay. We got they know the a total piece of apparatus, we got as well. Yeah. Total piece of apparatus, we got as well. Uh, including the four million, the 13. 13 pieces of apparatus, so that fun keeps them long. Yeah, but some of those don't last as long as other vehicles. No, then the Chiefs cars don't last as long as they do. Most of the bigger trucks do. They keep them 20 years. That's so, a major. So happens, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Unless something major happens to one of them, um, we keep them 20 years and replace them. We have 20 years replacement. So, so we have a ladder, and then after that, the next major is tanker. Tanker, tanker. and then after that, right in would be a rescue and then right. And so it's over 10 years we replace the four vehicles, or no, no, no we'll be more than that probably. We, we have to look at the dates and stuff to tell you exactly what we. Um, it's not four years. It's not four years. It'd be spread out along the down. No, no, four vehicles. Four over vehicles. 10 years. Yeah, probably. Yes. Probably. Probably. Yes. That's yes. what it would Yes. And then the capital transfers were obviously built around meeting those cash goals. It could go up or down. Well, you've got to pay cash better than borrowing. Right. Exactly. Can't wait till we're out of the borrowing. So. Setting, yeah. out, setting out bonds and everything else, you have to pay the interest on it and all of that. That's what we're trying to avoid. There's also an annual legal cost to maintain them. So, any other specific questions for these specific plans in the budget? Yeah, I had a uh, couple of questions. One, uh, State your name for the uh, sorry, Joel Markowitz uh, from the village. Um, this lays out your expenses. There's no in indication here of anticipated income. Yes, uh, actually, this year we're utilizing some fund balance. Right. It, I, I'm aware that at the village uh, they passed a resolution allowing for an increase on um, calls for repeated alarms and false alarms. What is your anticipation of income from that source? Honestly, we haven't seen any income from that in we, my five or six since years. Since that law is on the book, we've not received any income from either the town or the village. The law hasn't been enforced. Uh, it was my understanding that that was, was to be billed by the district directly. Now, what well, how? <laughs> yeah, the, uh, we had to get them credit, we had to get them credit up according to the law and stuff like that. And in fact, we just started getting them out on October 1st. So what does that mean, getting them out to the town? Giving out citations? Uh, yes, we give them out to the homeowner or the business owner, uh, the village and or the town, depending on which jurisdiction is copy of it, it's up to them to do it. It's up to the municipality, yeah. right. Uh, and, and are you going to be, uh, be enforcing the same uh, fee structure on residences as on commercial and non-profits? Yes, uh, that's according to town law, we can, we're allowed to enforce. Town law sets the fees. Depends on how many there are, the first one is just a notice, it's free, right. then it, it's the best place. Because it seems to me there's a, a, a very large difference between something like, say, uh, an Alant that would have repeated, uh, and that's a commercial operation, may have repeated uh, calls, and a homeowner who, you know, is going to feel it uh, much more directly. That's, that's correct. I think that's a great, it's a valid point, as we see the history of what we get, we can certainly address it. We haven't received one penny from that. Right. Um, I know. You will. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, I think on the fire alarms, I think we get 75% of the fine. I think the, the town keeps the other 25 for clerical on their part. Right. Like um, I don't see anything on there uh, for contributions to pension. Does the district uh, contribute anything to yes. pensions? That would be the service award program line for $169,500. And is there anything in there other than pensions in that line? And is there a state contribution to the payouts on that? There is not. It's, it's all, all district. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, 
there's a rather large, uh, considering what it is, a rather large charge for uh, lawn care and snow removal. Um, a year ago, I had suggested that there be a conversation between the district and the municipalities, uh, and I took it to both boards as a conversation and asked if they had any issues with uh, discussing some sort of a, a intermunicipal agreement. They've got the equipment, they've got the crew. Obviously, uh, the district wants, as soon as possible, to have access in snow. Um, so, you know, it's a priority, and I understand that. But um, did that conversation take place? Has the board gone to the municipalities? Because both the town and the village said they would have no issue with it and would be very open to, to discussing some sort of a, an agreement. Uh, and, and uh, when we did, when we first moved out to these two firehouses, right. uh, we did have a conversation, and the village basically told us that you know we can't guarantee we can get to for any length of time to clean the places out. They used to take care of firehouses in the village, right. which was no problem. But they're right here to go by and swing in and clean right. it out. Uh, we moved out here and over to the cataracts. Uh, they basically said that you know we need to be able to do it because we have to take care of the streets first, and it's going to be a while before we get to you. So we then we went and hired. A, I think is, uh, we want to make sure the doors are clear for snow removal early. And we only allow about less than three inches to build up before we put the bottom out. Right. So we don't get stuff coming out right. of the doors and stuff like um, that. Have you considered uh, having your own equipment to do it? It may be more, at, at that kind of money, it may be more uh, efficient to have a plow on a, on a pickup and do your own. We I, haven't done that. I would think the cost of maintaining that to maintain those people and managing those people might be for the has, uh, have, have the fees on that been competitively bid? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's going out this month for next year. Mm -hmm. uh, on, on lawn care, again, the lawn care is not a, a, uh, a time priority. Uh, again, both the village and the town have crews available, and again, both would be amenable to a discussion. It's not a, it's not a huge amount of money, like a truck, but you know, every, th these days when people are losing their homes and losing their jobs, every dollar counts. It's all tax money. Uh, the, the only other thing that, that uh, strikes me to bring up at this point is uh, what we were talking about before you initiated the meeting, and that's uh, communications. A year ago I suggested that you stream the meetings live as the library is currently doing. Um, that's not in this budget as far as I can tell. Uh, again, I would urge you before you finally adopt this for a relatively small amount of money. I mean, the library is doing it basically for the cost of a, of a webcam. It's not... Uh, visually very sophisticated, but it's there. You know, it, it allows disabled veterans, uh, infer aged infirmed, uh, just people who are busy commuting four hours a day to basically follow your meetings in real time or through the archives that are built up on, on the web. Uh, I think the library at this point has, uh, what, about six meetings up? Six or seven meetings that are, that are past meetings that are archived that you can go and watch. So and that's an operational issue, and if the funding is necessary, we can do a budget transfer during, during the year to, to move those Right. It's, it basically a small amount of money. It, even if you were paying somebody to do it, right. it's a small amount of money. Um, what I would suggest is uh, yeah, you, usually your work sessions and regular sessions are in that back office. You get That has a hung ceiling, as I remember. Uh, there, there are uh, small uh, adapter clamps that hang off the crossbars of that. You get a webcam hang it off the crossbars, leave it in place permanently, bring in a laptop or a computer that you could, as a matter of fact, who's ever in that office except you guys, you have a computer in there, just plug the webcam in, and before you start your meeting, you go online, you start the session, and you're live. Well, I think you don't even need somebody to operate the computer. And what is the process at this point? Uh, is there another work session to be uh, conducted before the adoption? This, this budget is planned to be adopted on Thursday night at our regular meeting. And if any discussion needs to be... This coming Thursday. Correct. Yeah. Right. Any discussion needs to be 
please consider prior to its adoption that happened at that public meeting? I just have one last question. The, the 100000 you got to add this year, is it an absolute necessity or is it this, you know, something that you're just doing as, you know, 